Hello my fellow riders, this is Chris at Ride and Reviews and today we're going to be looking at the Motorini Box 125cc Parallel Twin Cruiser. Now as you can see we're standing next to the Motorini Box 125cc Parallel Twin Cruiser. Now we're going to do this the same way we normally do, spec, design, comfort, pros and cons and cost of riding. Um, just a little bit of an update on the channel anyway, because we had such a good success with my live stream I might be considering doing one of those at the end of the month or every month, um, just so that I can answer questions and help you out with anything that you need to know. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay updated to all my latest updates in regards to that. But I digress, back to the video. This is a 125cc overhead cam parallel twin oil cooled engine. Now this is gonna be a quite a smooth ride because it's a parallel twin and the reason why it's so smooth is when one piston goes down, the other piston goes up, so they balance themselves out. Um, if you've ever seen the Honda CM125, same sort of engine, sounds pretty much the same as well, but we'll, we'll have a little bit of a listen in a bit. 17 litre tanks, and that should take you somewhere in the region of four to 500 miles, probably nearer the four. These are quite economical, and they're gonna do somewhere in the region of 80 to 100 miles to the gallon depending on quite a lot of different factors, but on average they should do that sort of distance. It has a standard spotlight headlight, LED indicators, LED rear light, and a digital dash. Now the digital dash will tell you how much fuel you've got, what gear you're in, your neutral light, engine management light, indicators, rev counter, and speedometer, and trip as well. So it does have quite a lot of stuff on there and it's very easy to see, it's very bright, so you can see all the information you need to. It does have a flasher to let people out. Remember though, in regards to the flasher, if um, you're on a junction and somebody else is coming up and you say, right, yes, uh, you flash your light so that they can come past, and they have an accident, it's your fault. So what I would always suggest is don't use the flasher to let people by. It's just one of those things, it's there. I wouldn't suggest you'd use it. High beam, low beam indicators and a horn. And on this side it's got engine cutoff and start button. There is no light switch on this one, the lights are on all the time. Um, they're called automatic lights, so you turn it on a couple of seconds later, the lighting will come on. You can't turn it off. That's what it's supposed to be. It's got, uh, apparently it says chrome exhaust, not stainless steel. So you shouldn't have too many issues with corrosion. Now, maybe later on in the line, uh, five years down the line, you might start seeing some discoloration and some peeling and stuff like that, but for a for now it shouldn't be a problem. And even then, if as long as you look after it, it shouldn't be a problem either. So everything looks quite nice. The only thing that I don't particularly like about this one is the front wheel and the rear wheel are different types of wheel. One's got like a supermoto sort of road tire and the front is a non-supermoto road-ish tyre. Uh, you'll be able to see in the pictures up here, but yeah, that's one thing that I don't particularly like about it. So it has upside down forks on the front, it has uh, twin shocks on the back and they're oil sprung shocks. Diamond cut rear wheels, front and rear wheels, discs on the front, discs on the back and it is combined braking, which means you put your foot on the back brake, sends 25% of the pressure to the front. Obviously this bike is based on some sort of Harley Davidson bike. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not really into the Harley Davidsons and stuff like that, but it's obvious that that's what it's based on. 
it's got quite a lot of sharp lines. It is a modern twist on a retro classic, I would say. Sort of like what the Keyway tried to do with a K light, but I would probably say this one's slightly better made. It's a little bit more money, but they spent a little bit more money on the parts that you are getting. So is it worth the extra, I think it's about 400 pounds, three, three to 400 pounds, I would say, yeah, it is. You're gonna have a smoother ride with the uh, parallel twin engine and it's going to be more comfortable I, w I would imagine but i haven't ridden this one yet i will be riding this one and i'll be putting the video up at a later date with the test ride of that so the suspension you've got some it's not too hard but then again it's not too soft the seat is quite hard now and it has quite a lot of padding in there so i don't think it's going to get that much softer things like the um the foot rest are really well made um, they're quite nice and comfortable but you are very much leaning back on this sort of bike it's not my cup of tea again but this is uh, not everybody likes the same thing I just noticed as well that it has adjustable front forks so you can uh, change the dampening on them this has the ability to take two people. I would say it's not really designed for that, but you can take two people. Remember, if you're on your CBT or um, L plates, you can't physically, you're not legally allowed to take a second person, so I wouldn't do it if I were you. Um, the seat in position, some people like it, some people don't. Me personally, it's not my cup of tea because um, I end up hurting my lower back because you're always leaning it all the way back like that and it ends up pulling your back. But if this is your sort of bike, it's your sort of bike. Go with what you like, not what I like. So th this is gonna be able to keep up a little bit better with the rest of the traffic. You're looking about 60 miles an hour cruising speed because the, uh, the, uh, the parallel twin engine is gonna give you a little bit more power. The power on this is 11.13 horsepower or 8.37 kilowatt hours. I think it's close to that anyway. So you, you are gonna be getting quite a lot of grunt for your money. But remember this bike is fairly heavy at 187 kilo. So you've got to take that into consideration as well. You will be able to hold this up when you're quite short. So I reckon you'd be all right, five, four, five, five. And even lower than that, if you want to use one foot, but five, 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 four, you should be able to do it with or oh, two feet, sorry. Um, you can't take a back rack, but you can have saddlebags. Um, there's no screen that comes with a bike, but you can get screens, uh, aftermarket screens that can go on. The mirrors are quite wide apart, so you're gonna be able to see over your shoulders, but there's not that much adjustment in them and the arm length is quite short, so you lose a little bit of that adjustment. And obviously the wheels front and back is something that I don't like because they're different. It's always good to have the same type of wheel on the front and on the back because it gives you a better stability whilst riding. Cost of riding. This bike is £2,549 plus £100 on the road from Cheap Bikes for Us. I believe it's about £150 cheap, uh, more expensive in other places. Um, if you wanted this bike delivering to you from anywhere in the country, uh, mainland UK is £100. If you are nearer to us, it will be cheaper. But yeah, our, on average, it's £100. If you're going into the outskirts, um, like back end of Wales and top end of Scotland and stuff like that, then it may be a little bit more. But on average, the main UK is about £100. Tax is £20. Your first year's tax comes free. MOT you don't have to have for three years and insurance is 350 to 700 pounds depending on age, uh, where you live, crime rates, all that sort of stuff. There is a link in the description for Bikeshore and they are usually quite competitive. If you go with them then riding reviews gets a little bit of a kickback and that's always good because it helps me out and it helps me produce more content for you guys. 
Lastly, uh, to fill the tank, you're looking at about 20 pounds, and that should get you somewhere in the region of 400 to 500 miles, depending on how you use the bike. If you're thrashing the bike everywhere, then you aren't gonna get the top amount of speed, uh, top amount of mileage. So take that into consideration. So I think that's it for this video. I hope it has helped and I hope you like the Motorini Box 125cc parallel twin motorbike or cruiser, shall we say. So subscribe to my channel, comment below if you've got anything to say on this video, hit the thumbs up or thumbs down if you don't like it. That's entirely up to you. Uh, as I say, subscribe to my channel, go over to my website and join the forum, get, in, get involved, start communicating with each other, ask any question and I will do my best to answer them. But as always, ride safe.